Hey, it's Jeff from Home Renovation DIY, and today we are here to install a washer and dryer. Now I know it's not rocket science, and for many of you, you're going to be like, wow, what's there to learn about washers and dryers? And the answer is, not a whole lot. Not much has changed in the world of appliance installation, but I'm going to run through this real quick because there's always people out there in the YouTube world who are new homeowners or new to appliances or new to taking care of their own house. And so this is for you guys. All right, we're going to go through the real basics. Washer and dryer are really simple hookups. It's a universal situation, so no matter where you are, your power supply and your exhaust is already going to be in place. All you got to do is connect them. Now, your washing machine is basically the first thing you have to hook up because it has a drain and it's going to have a drain location. You might even have a box in the wall that has a little black pipe sticking out of it. That is where this thing goes. Now, these are all on little connectors on the back packing tape of course and you really just stick that in the hole that simple right the only other thing you've got here to deal with is you also have a power supply and it's just a regular cord okay and there should be a plug in the vicinity to power that up bam and ah, gotta love those new modern plugs you got to push an equal amount of pressure on each side or that doesn't let you in and of course, if you go out and you buy a hose kit, they may or may not be color coded. So it's very important to pay attention to the back of the machine. There's generally going to be little blue and red plastic things, or there's going to be words or a picture. Make sure you connect the hot to the hot and the cold to the cold. And that is about all there is to know. The water supply hooks up like a garden hose. Make sure you have your black washers in place. If you don't have the washers, run back to the store real quick. Go to the plumbing department they'll sell you hose washers which is what that's called all right you just finger tighten it grab yourself a wrench and give it another usually quarter to half turn <clears throat> make positive contact with the hose you can tighten that really really over and over and over again all you're doing is compressing the washer to the point where it's almost useless and you increase the risk of having a flood so We'll get the, the hot line on as well. There we are. Just a trick when you're working with these things. Instead of trying to just thread it on, if you go backwards, just really slow, you'll feel it and push. You'll feel it sit into place as soon as it grabs the thread. Then you can tighten. A lot of the th situations here, especially on the machine, it's going to be plastic. And if you cross thread it, which is you go on an angle when you're tightening it, you're going to bend all the threads over and you won't be able to get a good lock and your machine is going to need maintenance before you even get started. All right, so here we go. So we just push it up against the end and go out counterclockwise while you're pushing with your left hand and uh, you should be able to hear this. Oh. Right there. That's where it seats in place and then you can tighten it up. Now you know your threads are all in line and everything is going to be just fine. Same thing, extra quarter to a half. Oh, there we go. All right. There it is. Now, if you're not holding at the right angle, you won't get that click. It won't sit in the right spot. Just be patient with it, and you'll get it eventually. There's my half. And now we can test it. <laughs> that easy. Pressurize the lines. You can see we got a bit of a drip here. We'll add another half. This is a perfect time. If you develop a little bit of a drip, that means the washer doesn't have enough compression and the water's probably going to seep out right here at this joint. Just give it a little bit of a tighten. Not going to be an issue. All right. There we go. That's perfect. So we have our discharge hoses there now, our hot and our cold, our power supply. That unit is ready to be used. Brilliant. Only thing left to do before you turn it on is remove all of the packaging. Before you run your machine for the first time, just make sure you take care to get all the extra tape and sticky stuff and protectors off. And the reason for that 
is if you run a hot load first, some of the times these adhesives are really difficult to clean off. When it comes to the dryer, what you need is basically to connect the exhaust port at the bottom to maybe one up here. When you're in the basement, it's going to be coming out of the ceiling or going through the wall. In a lot of cases, if it's on the main floor or upstairs, they'll install it right through the wall about four or five inches off the ground. So you can go out and buy just an elbow. This is um, a four inch elbow and it has uh, adjustable parts. So you can make minor adjustments and you can slide it right into the wall. But in our situation, we need an eight foot accordion. Now the way you want to do this for the installation is we have a gear clamp here, all right? And we're going to be compressing the metal rings on the foil ducting around the pipe, okay? Nice and simple. It should just slip over without too much difficulty. So it's a bit of irony. There used to be a piece of pipe sitting here and they had some foil tape on it. The foil tape was interrupting with my ability to slide that over. So then I cut all that back and now the cut pipe has just got a bit of a jagged line on it and I can't slide my foil over. So I'm using my crimpers here now just to change the diameter of my pipe. And if you haven't seen this before, these tool will save your bacon. It has three on the top and two on the bottom. So every time you compress, you take a couple inches of pipe and you squeeze it into a smaller diameter. So now this will slide over. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. So much easier. Yeah. Now that we got this up here, we'll take our gear clamp and we'll slide it up. I like to make sure you crimp, you're tightening it on about two runs down. All right, if you have them around, take one of these little self-tapping screws. Bum, 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 bum. You buy them in the little section of the hardware store where they have all the ductwork and run it just underneath that gear clamp. And that will pinch it in place so that it can't slide off or be tugged off over time. And you can be confident it's always gonna stay there. All right, now the dryer already has a crimp on it, you can see. So this should be a little bit easier going here. Should be, we'll see what happens. And again, you wanna get the first couple of metal runs over that over that area and tighten her up. Okay. Okay. So the last thing with a traditional dryer, of course, is the power supply. All right. Now it has a unique pattern on the plug. So you just have to match that up with the wall install, give it a good shot. Uh, you know what? I don't want to have that interrupting when I push it back. Now, there's one other thing you might want to know. So a lot of dryers today are coming out with a special feature where they actually bring hot water to the dryer and they're adding a little bit of moisture. It's like a steaming function. So you have to hook up to the hot water supply. In that situation, they'll supply you with a kit. In that kit, they're going to have this little hose here, which connects to the hot water. And they're going to have a splitter. So you can have hot water to the washing machine and then another hose that goes to the dryer. If that is your case, they should supply that in the dryer. This is actually for the another unit, but I just wanted to show you that in case you run into that situation. Well, now that was quick and simple. All we got to do is push it back in place, take off all the protective wrapping, and I like to push with my knee down the bottom. You're gonna see, you're gonna to have to give yourself about four or five inches of space here for the duct work, okay? And just for aesthetics, we'll pull the machines to be flush. That's pretty. So if you found that information helpful at all, then hit the, a thumbs up. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so. We have a lot of great content coming out. And if you're interested in more appliance installation videos, kind of like doing kitchens, you can hit the link right here. And I can show you how to install stoves and dishwashers and hood fans and all kinds of great stuff. See you in the next video.